traveling eastbound on the West Park Toll Road in Houston, Texas. Just can't wait to get on Toops Graphics again. presents an Algebra 1 tutorial video over systems of linear equations. In Algebra 1, a system of linear equations is two equations that have two unknown quantities. This is an example of a system of linear equations. The two equations are y equal negative 2x plus 1 and y equal x plus 4. The answer to a system of linear equations is the intersection point of the two lines. Notice in this problem, the intersection point of the two lines is negative 1 comma 3. If you were to take your intersection point and substitute it into the original equations, the intersection point would satisfy both linear equations. In this instance, 3 would equal to 3 in both equations. In summary, the intersection point of two linear equations will be the solution to the system. And if you substitute the values into your original equations, it will satisfy both of the equations. Now it's your turn. Find the solution to the systems of equations y equal 2x plus 4 and y equal negative x plus 7 by graphing the two lines on an xy coordinate grid. To be able to graph these lines, we need to find the slope and the y-intercept of each line. We'll use y equal mx plus b. In the linear equation y equal 2x plus 4, the slope would be 2 and the y-intercept would be 4. In the equation y equal negative x plus 7, the slope would be negative 1 and the y-intercept would be 7. Remember, to graph a line, start by drawing a dot on the y-intercept, then use the slope as a guide to get the coordinates for the rest of the line. In our first equation, y equal 2x plus 4, the y-intercept is 4, so draw a dot on the 4. Now we'll use our slope of 2 or 2 over 1, which means to go up two spaces and to the right one, and draw another dot. Now you'll continue the process of adding dots by going up to right one. When you get to the top, Repeat the process by going down. From the y-intercept, go down 2 and left 1 until you get to the end of the coordinate grid. Now that we have the dots of the line, connect them to form the line. Now let's look at the next line. It has a y-intercept of 7, so draw a dot at the 7. Now let's look at the slope. It's negative 1 or negative 1 over 1. That means from our y-intercept, We'll go down one and to the right one and draw another dot. Now repeat the process of going down one left one and go across the coordinate grid. Once you finish to the right, you need to go up one and left one and to the top of the grid. Now we can connect the dots and form our second line. Notice the two lines form an X with an intersection point. Remember the intersection point will be the solution to the linear system. These two lines intersect at the point 1, 6. Also remember, if you substitute the x and y coordinates of the intersection point into the equations of the system, it will satisfy both equations in the system of equations. If we substitute x as 1 and y as 6 into our equations, both equations will end up being 6 equal to 6. Therefore, 1, 6 is the solution to the systems of equations. How to Solve Systems of Linear Equations is sponsored by the y-axis. Do you need to graph a line? You need to use the y-axis to get the y-intercept. It's also sponsored by slope. Do you need to graph a line? You need to use the slope. We'll be back right after this commercial break. Aren't these direct variation tater tot deals just swell? Yeah. Yes, it is. 
you can use a constant of variation to find the cost of your tater tots. Wow. Yeah. You could get the Sissy Sue side order of four tots for 60 cents. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sissy Sue, nah, nah. You can get a regular, regular side of nine tater tots for a buck 35. Or, or, hypothetically, you can get a super size side order with 14 tater tots for $2.10 plus tax. Wow. I think I'm going to get the Megan Manly Band side order with 20 tots for $3. Mm. Hey, did you know that if you divide the price by the number of tots, you always get 15 cents? That's right, boy. Should and that 15 cents is called the constant of variation. And if you were to make a graph of the ordered pair, it would be a line that goes through the origin. Through the origin? Through the origin. And get this, your table of ordered pairs would also be proportional. Any set of cross products would be equivalent. You know, if you come back here later, and tip your car hop with a tip that varies directly with your bill, you just might get a date. Oh. The direct variation tater tot deals only at Sonic. Continuing eastbound down the West Park Toll Road, the Algebra 1 tutorial system of linear equations continues. Remember, to solve systems of linear equations, you can graph both lines. The intersection point will be the solution. Another way to get the answer to a system of linear equations is by substitution. Let's first solve the system of equations of y equal negative x minus 2 and y equal 4x minus 7. If you look at the first equation, we know that y is equal to negative x minus 2. That means we could take the value of negative x minus 2 and substitute or replace it into the other y in the other equation. Now let's replace the y in the equation y equal 4x minus 7 with the negative x minus 2. That gives us a new equation of negative x minus 2 equals 4x minus 7. After we substitute the values for y, notice that our equation only has one variable now, which is x. Now we can solve the equation for x. The first thing we need to do to solve for x is to move the smallest x to the other side. So we'll move the negative x to the right. 4x plus 1x would be 5x. Now our equation is negative 2 equal 5x minus 7. We need to combine the constants, so we'll move the negative 7 to the left by adding 7. Negative 2 plus 7 is 5. That makes our equation 5 equal to 5x. The last step is to divide the coefficient of 5. 5 divided by 5 would be 1, so 1 would equal to x. Now that we know that the value of x is equal to 1, let's substitute again 1 into x in the first equation of y equal negative x minus 2. In our equation of y equal negative x minus 2, let's replace the x with a value of 1, which we found in the other equation. If you do the arithmetic of negative 1 minus 2, you would get negative 3. So the value of y would be negative 3. That means we know the coordinate of the intersection point. It would be at 1 comma negative 3. To make sure our answer of 1 comma negative 3 is correct, let's replace or substitute 1 for x and negative 3 for y into our equations. If we do that, we'll have negative 3 equals negative 1 minus 2 and negative 3 equals 4 times 1 minus 7. If you do the arithmetic for the problems, you'll get negative 3 equal negative 3 in both equations. That means our answer of 1 comma negative 3 is the intersection point of the two lines. Now it's your turn. Solve for x and y. y equal 5x minus 10 and y equal 3x plus 8. Use substitution to get your answer.
in our first equation, we are given that y equals 5x minus 10. That means we can substitute or replace y in the second equation with the 5x minus 10. Notice after we replace y with 5x minus 10, we only have one variable in our equation. Now we can solve for x. The first step to solve the equation for x would be to move the smallest variable, which is 3x. So we'll subtract 3x from both sides of the equation. After subtracting 3x, you'll get 2x minus 10 equals 8. The next step to solve the equation is to combine the constants. So we'll move the value of negative 10 to the right by adding 10 to both sides of the equation. If we add 10 to 8, we would get our equation to be 2x equal 18. Now we'll divide by the coefficient of 2. 18 divided by 2 would give us the answer to the variable of x. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So we know that the variable of x is equal to 9. Now that we know that x is equal to 9, we can replace the x in the equation y equal 5x minus 10 with 9 and solve for y. If you were to replace x with 9, you would get y equal 5 times 9 minus 10. That would give you y equals 45 minus 10. Lastly, if you subtract 45 and 10, you would get 35. So the answer would be x equal 9 and y would be 35. And lastly, remember to check your answer by replacing the x with 9 and the y with 35 into your equations. If you do this, both equations work out to be 35 equal 35. So 9 comma 35 is the solution to the system of equations. Let's do another problem involving substitution together. Solve for x and y. 4y minus 5x equals 9, and x equals 4y plus 11. Remember, you'll replace x with 4y plus 11. Remember, in this equation, x equals 4y plus 11. So we'll take 4y plus 11 and substitute it into the value of x into the other equation. If we replace that x with 4y plus 11, our new equation would be 4y minus 5, start a parentheses, 4y plus 11, close parentheses, equals 9. After replacing the x with 4y plus 11, we only have y in our equation. The first step would be to use a distributive property and distribute the negative 5 to the 4y plus 11. This would make our equation 4y minus 20y minus 55 equal 9. The next step would to be combine our variables of y. 4y minus 20y would be negative 16y. So now our equation would be negative 16y minus 55 equal 9. The next step would to be combine our constants of 55 and 9. We'll add 55 to both sides. Now our equation would be negative 16y equals 64. The next step would be divide the coefficient of negative 16. If you divide the coefficient of negative 16 into 64, you would get the answer to y. y would be a negative 4. Now that we know that the value of y equals negative 4, we could substitute negative 4 into the y of x equal 4y plus 11 and solve for x. If we were to replace y with negative 4, we would get x equal 4 times negative 4 plus 11. This would equate to x equal negative 16 plus 11, which would give us our answer that x would be negative 5. So the intersection point or the solution to the systems of equations would be negative 5 comma negative 4. How to Solve Systems of Linear Equations is sponsored by an ordered pair. Do you want to know the solution to a system of linear equations? You need an ordered pair. Time for a commercial break. Isn't it great that Sonic is selling the equivalent ratio meal deals? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get the 420 meal deal. <laughs> you get four tacos, about yay big, with I don't like salad on mine, so it's just meat and cheese. Oh, and a 20 ounce soda pop. 
That's a good idea. <laughs> you sure have outgrown that little kitty 210 meal deal. Right. It only has two tacos and a scanty 10 ounce soda pop. Well, with these arms you got, you gotta you gotta feed the dragon. You know what I'm saying? Hold there, young one. I'm gonna eat the mainly man deal. It has eight tacos and a massive 40 ounce soda pop. You eat all that deal, and your biceps will start bulging. <laughs> You know, you take a girl down here, use a coupon with your order, and show her how to make equivalent ratios. Talk about being a big magnet. The equivalent ratio meal deals only at Sonic. Continuing our drive down the West Park Toll Road in Houston, Texas, the Algebra 1 Tutorial System to Linear Equations continues. So far, we've learned to solve a system of linear equations. We can graph the two equations and find the intersection point. And we can also use substitution to solve for both of the variables. Now we'll learn a third way. You can also eliminate one of the variables to solve for the system of equations. Let's learn how to use elimination to find the answer to a system of linear equations. Let's first start by solving for x and y in our systems of equations with 4x plus y equal negative 1 and 2x minus y equal negative 5. Notice that these two equations are in standard form. When you use elimination to solve for a system of equations, you want both of the equations in standard form, ax plus by equals c. Since both of our equations are in standard form, we want to write the equations on top of each other. So move the 2x minus y equal negative 5 underneath the 4x plus y equal negative 1 and make sure you line up your variables and coefficients. Now that we have the terms lined up, look at your y's. Notice that plus y and negative y are opposites. This is the key to the process of elimination. If a variable has opposite coefficients, the variable will eliminate. Once you have a variable with opposite coefficients, you will add the three columns. The opposite coefficient will eliminate. Then you will solve for the remaining variable. Now we'll draw a bar to show addition and to start combining the variables. We'll add 4x plus 2x, the y's will eliminate, and we'll combine negative 1 and negative 5. That would give us an equation of 6x equal negative 6. Now we can solve for the variable x. To solve for x, we need to divide by the coefficient. So we'll divide both sides by 6. Negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. So we know that the variable of x is equal to negative 1. Now that we know that x is negative 1, we need to rewrite one of the original equations and use it to solve for the other variable, which is y. Let's rewrite 4x plus y equal negative 1 to solve for y. Since we know that x equals negative 1, we will substitute the value of negative 1 into the x behind the 4. If we substitute negative 1 into x, we'll have 4 times negative 1 plus y equal negative 1. Now we can solve for our variable of y. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So now our equation is negative 4 plus y equal negative 1. The next step would be to combine the constants. We'll add 4 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 4 would be the answer to the equation. Our new equation would be y equals to a positive 3. So the solution would be negative 1 comma 3. If you were to check negative 1 comma 3 into the original equations, negative 1 comma 3 would satisfy both equations. So negative 1 comma 3 is the intersection point of the two lines or the solution to the system of equations. Let's do another problem. Let's solve the system of equations for x and y. 2x minus 2y equal 14, and x plus 4y equal negative 13. Let's use elimination to get the variable. Since the y's have different signs, let's get the opposite of y. 
To get the opposite of why, we need to find the LCM of the coefficients of 2 and 4. The LCM of 2 and 4 is 4. So we can eliminate Y by making them one of them negative 4 and the other Y positive 4. Notice that the bottom Y is already positive 4Y. To get the top Y to be ne negative 4Y, we need to multiply the negative 2 times 2. So we'll multiply the entire equation of 2X minus 2Y equal 14 by 2. We'll use the distributive property and multiply the 2X, the 2Y, and the 14 by 2 and rewrite our new equation. If you were to multiply the equation by 2 and rewrite it, you would get 4X minus 4Y equal 28. Notice that our Ys are now opposites. So we could combine straight down and get 5X equal 15. Now we divide 15 by 5 and our X would equal to the quantity of 3. Now we'll rewrite one of the original equations. Let's use X plus 4Y equal negative 13 and solve for Y. Let's replace X with 3. Now we have 3 plus 4Y equal negative 13. The next step would be to divide combine the constants of 3 and 13. We'll subtract 3 from both sides. Negative 13 minus 3 combines to negative 16. 4 would go into negative 16 negative 4 times. So y would equal to the quantity of negative 4. So 3 comma negative 4 would be the coordinate where the lines of 2x minus 2y equal 14 and x plus 4y equal negative 13 would intersect. Now it's your turn. See if you can solve for X and Y by using the process of elimination. X plus 6Y equal 1 and 2X minus 3Y equal 32. To do elimination, we need to find our opposite coefficients. So let's look at the coefficients of X and Y. X's have a coefficient of 1 and 2, and Y's have a coefficient of 6 and 3. The opposite for the X's would be negative 2 and 2, and the opposites for the Y's would be 6 and negative 6. Since our Y's already have a positive and a negative sign, let's eliminate the Y's. We'll need to multiply the second equation, 2x minus 3y equal 32, by 2 to make the negative 3 turn into a negative 6. We're going to use the distributive property and multiply the 2x minus 3y equal 32 by 2. That will give us a new equation of 4x minus 6y equals 64. Notice that the 6s are opposites. That's going to eliminate the y's. We're going to combine 4x and x and get 5x and 1 and 64 and get 65. The next step would be to divide by 5. 65 divided by 5 would be 13. So our variable of x is equal to the quantity of 13. To solve for y, let's rewrite x plus 6y equal 1 since there's no negatives in the equation. Let's replace x with 13. Now we have 13 plus 6y equal 1. The next step would be to combine the 13 and 1. We'll subtract 13 from both sides. This will give us an equation of 6y equal negative 12. The last step would be to divide the coefficient of 6. Negative 12 divided by 6 would be the answer to the quantity of y. Negative 12 divided by 6 is negative 2. So y would be negative 2. That means our coordinate would be 13 comma negative 2. That means that 13 comma negative 2 would be the coordinate where the two lines would intersect. How to Solve Linear Systems has been sponsored by Opposites. Do you need to solve by elimination? You need to make the coefficients opposites. It's also sponsored by standard notation. Do you need to use elimination to solve a system of equations? You need to make both equations into standard notation. And by Pentagon T. Do you need to believe? 
you need Pentagon Tea. This video has been produced by Tubes Graphics. Tubes Graphics, always believe.